Salt Lake City has a vision to power its government operations and then ultimately the whole community with 100% renewable energy. And so this station is just one example of doing that on a smaller scale. The city's um, energy management or energy uh, initiatives uh, meant that we had to achieve a net zero energy uh, goal with, with each fire station. Um, so we had to understand what their definition of, of that was. Um, and that just means that on an annual basis, the, the building and site will produce as much energy as it consumes over, you know, over the course of the year. The new station is beautiful. I like the concept of the green, of the, uh, the gold lead. Um, I believe in that, I believe in those ideals. Um, so there's, there's a number of things I'm looking forward to, but it's very, very large. So, uh, I don't know. I like the coziness of this old station. I really do like the coziness of this station. But uh, it's, it's, it's time to be rebuilt. It needs, it needs some work. We're very attached to the old 14th. Um, being there for 15, 20 years, uh, you, you take ownership in it and, and the area. And um, although we know that change is going to happen, um, it's something new for us, um, and, I, and, and we'll adapt, and we'll be fine. We'll give the great service that we have always provided to the citizens. One of the neatest things for me personally is this fire station is outfitted with a couple of saunas. There's been a whole big push nation and really internationally wide for firefighters after a huge incident and fire, all the carcinogens and smoke that we're covered in, the cancer is running crazy through the firefighter population. And they found that if firefighters can go back and sauna and shower off and sweat out and clean up, that it's really getting those carcinogens out of our systems. And our, our new station is, is set up that way to have that. And it's important to me because in 2008 I was diagnosed with cancer and it was a hard enduring thing that I'm still going through and I just hate to see any of my, my fire family have to go through that. And there are several of us that have pushed for this and a couple that have really gone to great lengths to make sure that the firefighters are protected. I can't thank them enough and all the other firefighters are pretty excited about these, these new uh, things for our safety coming in. So we have more uh, dorm and sleeping spaces. Uh, we have 12 rooms, I believe. Uh, so we can have uh, two crews. Uh, there, there's room for us to expand. Um, we um, can have at least two crews, uh, possibly uh, even more uh, support people or um, investigators or, or single unit response along with uh, uh, an engine crew and a truck crew in the future. So they, they really wanted this um, openness, this like transparency, so that the community driving or walking by could actually see the life and the energy and the warmth um, that is given off by the building. Every request or response from Salt Lake City Fire, we had to, we had to kind of pivot and come up with how's the, what's the most sustainable approach to resolving or addressing that request. Um, and in the end, I think it's you know, it contributed to a more beautiful, uh, yet still incredibly high-performance building. Interesting with this, the new station that's being built, besides just being a beautiful facility, um, Station 14 is also a type, zip, type 6 fire apparatus station, which means we have auxiliaries and we have plenty of grass fires on the west side. So we're going to be a lot closer to assist in those from from here when we get into our new station. We're also um, sandwiched in between SR201, Bangor Highway, I215, and I80. So they're major thoroughfares that um, we have a lot of commerce and industry along with just regular uh, people in their cars, but we see a, a, a lot of significant um, accidents, injuries, uh, dealing with semis, and everything that goes along the roadway, uh, rollovers, semi-rollovers, uh, personal vehicle car rollovers, um, and just being where we are, we, we have the unique ability to, uh, to respond to those uh, quickly and effectively and mitigate um, two major um, interstates along with Bangor and SR201 
which are, uh, for all intents and purposes, mini interstates. And then obviously the, the industrial portion, there's a lot of hazardous materials, there's a lot of uh, industrial machinery, um, there's a lot of trauma that occurs on the west side of the city. We have to uh, uh, respond within our given time frames, uh, which you know we want to respond within uh, three to five minutes on medical and fire calls. And to do that, uh, you can't keep units just in the city. They have to move west. In terms of that efficiency, the, the building had to be oriented a certain way for the emergency vehicles to have easy access to the streets. Um, so we're on this corner site. Um, they could go out, the primary exit is on the 3800, and from there they can go east or west. Um, California Ave. Um, and that meant that all of the glass in the apparatus bay um, is all south and west facing. But we did a tremendous amount of study because of all this glass um, on what was the most efficient glass products that were available on the commercial market. So all of the glass in the apparatus bay and throughout the building is actually a triple pane, thermally broken, argon filled uh, glazing system. Uh, so most glasses uh, for residential and commercial projects are, are double pane with air in between them. Argon actually increases the energy efficiency of the glass so it's not going to allow as much thermal transfer, not as much heat gain coming into the space. In addition to that, on the east, south and west faces we put this ceramic frit on the glass which further reduces the amount of solar heat gain coming in to the building by 37% over just your normal coated uh, glass. A, a facility like this benefits the community first and foremost by reducing pollution and then also enhancing the fiscal responsibility of the government. It was designed to operate as efficient as possible in terms of energy and then also over time generate its own power on site, reducing operational costs and then ultimately end costs to the taxpayer. So it's really kind of about delivering that combined benefit of improvements to public health but then also balancing the, the fiscal responsibility of running a government.